This is part 20 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to implement search in ASP.NET Core REST API. At the moment, within our employees controller, we don't have a search method. So first, let's include a method here. This is also going to be public async. We want this method to return the list of employees that match our search criteria. So the return type is going to be task of action result of i enumerable of employee objects. Let's bring in the namespace for i enumerable. And let's name this method search. We want to be able to search by two things, the name of the employee and gender. Name is of type string and gender is an enum. Let's call the parameter gender and gender is a value type. Let's make it optional by including a question mark. Now, when we issue HTTP GET request to this URI slash API slash employees, this GET employees method is called and it's going to return the list of all employees. If we include an extension to this route, that is, if we include the ID of the employee in the URI, that is when we navigate to slash API slash employees slash one, then this get employee method is called and that specific employee is returned. Similarly, to be able to get to this search method, we want to include an extension to this route at the controller level. So when the user navigates to the URI slash API slash employees slash search, we want this method to be called. So let's decorate this method also with the HTTP get attribute and then include search as the extension to the base route at the controller level. At the moment, within our employee repository, we don't have a search method. The signature of the search method is going to be very similar to this get employees method. So let's make a copy of that, change the name of the method to search, and then include the two search parameters, name and gender. Our obvious next step is to provide the implementation for this new search method. So within our employee repository, let's implement the interface. Visual Studio has generated the method somewhere in the middle of the file right here. The first thing that we want to do here is build our search query depending on what values are provided for these two search parameters, name and gender. So let's create a variable of type iQueryable of employee objects and let's call this variable query and I'm going to initialize this with appdb context dot employees this is going to return us the complete list of employees if a value for this name parameter is provided meaning if it is not null or empty then we want to search by name and here is the expression for that if the incoming name parameter is not null or empty, we are adding the where clause. At the moment, we are searching in both the properties, first name and last name, and we are using the contains search. But we can also use starts with or ends with, depending on our search requirement. We want to do the same thing for this gender parameter as well. Same idea here. If gender is not null, search by gender. Finally, execute the query and return the results. We are using await keyword here, but forgot to turn this method into async. All that is left right now to do is call the search method from our employees controller. First, let's include a try catch block. In the try block, let's call employee repository search method and to it pass the two incoming search parameters name and gender. This is an async method, so let's await its execution and store the search results in a variable. If there is at least one search result, and the easiest way to check if we have at least one search result is by using the link function any. Let's bring in the required namespace as well. So if there are search results, let's return them along with the HTTP status code 200 OK. On the other hand, if there are no search results, let's return 404 not found. With all these changes in place, let's run our project and quickly test search functionality using Postman. 
Remember, the URI extension to get to the search method is slash search. And if we take a look at the list of employees that we have in the database, notice we've got five employees. And out of these five employees, we have two employees that has the name John. And to pass a value for this name parameter, let's use a query string. So we include a question mark in the URI, name equals John. There we go, status code 200 OK, along with the two employees that match our search criteria. Now, let's search by gender. Remember, gender is an enum. So if we go to the definition on this, as you can see, male is zero, female is one, other is two. This means we can either pass the enum values for our gender search parameter, zero, one, or two, or these strings, male, female, other. So let's search by gender. There we go, we got only the male employees. Notice the gender property value for the three employee objects that we got back from the database is zero, which is male. Now, let's search both by gender and name. Let's include the name query string parameter as well, and the value is John. There we go, we now have only two employees that match our search criteria. Now, let's leave the name as John, but change the gender from male to female. We have no employees that match our search criteria, so we have 404 not found. At the moment, we are using the URI slash API slash employees slash search to get to our search method within the employees controller. The values for the two search parameters, name and gender, are passed from the URL using query strings. The values from these two query strings are mapped to the respective parameters on the search method by name. Now, if you want to pass the values for the two search parameters, name and gender, in the URI as route parameters like this, modify the route template on the HTTP GET attribute. All we need to do is include both the search terms as route parameters, and then this URI will be mapped to our search method as expected. Personally, I wouldn't recommend this approach if you have more than one search parameter. Query strings are better. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.